Greetings. So today we're going to be installing Ubuntu GNOME uh, 16.10. And I figure most of you are running this on Windows. And so I suggest that you install this onto bare hardware. But for those of you that don't have an extra PC around, um, I'm going to be doing it today through VMware's free VMware Workstation Player. I'll be showing you guys how to do that and walking you through it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, now I've already got VMware Player installed and it's right here. Now as far as installing or as far as downloading the ISO, I figure all of you guys at this point have downloaded enough files off the internet to where you can handle that and you can do it yourself. So I'm just going to go at it from the concept of you've already picked what you want, be it Ubuntu with Unity, or Ubuntu with LXDE, or Ubuntu with GNOME, like I have, or whatever. Just find it, download the 64-bit ISO, and then we'll go from there. So once we get a uh, workstation player up, we're going to tell it that we want to install a new virtual machine. So now we're going to click on Browse, and we're going to browse to the ISO file. And so I've got mine stored on a second hard drive um, external to my computer. But we're going to browse to it, and as you can see, I've downloaded a lot of ISOs. And uh, I'm going to go down here to 16.10, and that is the latest, as of time of recording, the latest Ubuntu version. And so here I'm just going to put in my name. Now what this is going to do is this is going to set up um, your user account and whatnot for you. Again, I highly suggest that you do this on bare metal. So you do this for yourself. But at the same time, um, you know, we all understand that's not always feasible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a kids RAM to if I can. And again, I have a pretty boss machine, so I'm completely okay doing these configurations. Um, let's not do that. Now, for any of you that are doing this on a VM like this, there are three different ways that you can really do it. You can have it with the networking, you can have it built into its own NAT, um, and NAT is a networking term. If you don't know what it is, basically, um, it's what allows you to not have a dedicated IP on a local intranet. Um, but if you want to share the host's networking adapter, you can get it to talk to the internet directly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it on its own NAT because. I don't care if anyone can reach this system, but if you're going to load like a virtualization software in a server environment and do, uh, say, a website, you're going to do a website hosting based off of it, then you're really going to want to know how those things work. I'm just introducing you to that concept now so that you can kind of get an idea for what's possible. Now, for any of you that don't know how to uh, burn an ISO image, and just let me know, and we'll figure out a way to show you guys how to do that. I highly suggest using either Win32 Disk Imager or Pendrive Linux. Um, those just seem to work out very well for me. Uh, you can also use Rufus. I use Rufus to burn Windows images all the time. And Rufus will work with Linux images just as well. Um, so that will be perfectly fine. Now right now, uh, this is what all of you would see on your you know, monitor if you were booting your computer to a USB. Now, of course you would have to do whatever the boot menu op, uh, BIOS time option is and different things but eventually it will get you to here. Now with Linux they have this fun little thing called live CDs and what that means is you can boot from a USB or a CD at that point in time when they created it and you can test out the operating system on your hardware without ever installing anything to a hard drive. We're not going to do that because, again, this is a VM 
and hopefully if you're doing this, you're doing it on bare metal and you have every intention of putting this on the hard drive. So we're going to click English and we're going to tell it um, that we want to install Ubuntu GNOME and it's going to go through and do its process. Now we're going to get various options and I'm just going to try to talk you through the options relatively quickly. Um, if it's connected to the internet, I highly suggest doing this option. What this does is it will download updates to Ubuntu um, while it's going through the process of installing. Now this second option is install third-party hardware such as Flash and MP3s. Well, Flash and MP3s, it's free software, right? Yes, but it is free as in beer, not free as in speech. What I mean by that is free as in beer is you get a beer for free and you drink it, you have consumed it, and you did that for free. Whereas if you get freedom of speech, you can say anything that you want and you can't be uh, attacked for it. I mean, you can, let's be real, but you are constitutionally protected to take that, take your words and modify them and do anything that you want. Whereas, you know, with MP3s and with Flash, you can't take those open public um, protocols and modify them and change them. That's one of the beauties of open source is that you can change and redistribute your changes to a speak to a piece of software. Um, but go ahead and do that because all of us that run Linux, we like the open source, we like seeing the code, but we also like the realistic uh, expectation of getting on Netflix and watching YouTube and doing things with proprietary cr protocols because we like those services. Um, and again, I'm not trying to speak for everybody, but it is one of those things that's very consistent uh, across the board. Now here, you could encrypt your entire hard drive. I would not suggest to do that unless you know what you're doing. If you use BitLocker on your Windows machine, then obviously, you know, if you've been doing that for any length of time, you should be A-OK -okay to do that here, but I would not suggest it um, unless you have a really good reason for it. As far as the LVM, um, it basically takes multiple drives and throws them into one massive storage. Uh, again, I wouldn't do it uh, unless you knew what you were doing. But you can do the, the default, and if you've done um, a lot of uh, partition scheming before, and you really want to do something special, you want to dual boot, you can do something else. Now, if it did detect, if Ubuntu GNOME did detect that there was a Windows partition, it would give you the option to dual boot. Also, if it noticed that there was another Linux distribution or another operating system distribution, it would be, is sophisticated enough to sit there and say, hey, this operating system is there. Do you want to do them side by side? Um, and then you would get that option. Uh, so you're going to pick your time zone, which it's to whatever, wherever you live. Um, you're going to pick the keyboard layouts, and I don't know why suddenly it got cropped. But we'll just do that. And keep in mind, with it being a VM, it's going to spatially do things a little funky. Um, we're just going to call it that. I'm going to type on password. Now, if you set it to auto login, it will log in automatically. Every time you turn on the machine, it will log into your account. Now, the first account created on a Ubuntu machine is given pseudo access. And what pseudo means is super user do. The super user is root, and when you tell it to do something, it, it just does it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no question about it. When you do enact super user do in front of a command, it just does it. Because effectively, super user, to my understanding, and anybody that knows this better than I do, please correct me, but it is almost equivalent to administrator from the Windows world, but is much closer to uh, system. Because system runs kernel 
and operating system tasks, but so does root. Whereas administrator, it's a user account and it's only a user account. It's not running any of that kind of stuff. But, and again, you get another option to encrypt your home folder. I wouldn't do it. I don't know why you would, but man, it's one of those things. So now that we've done that, it is installing. It is copying over all the files. It's going to extract them. And as you can tell um, from where the bar is, it was doing that to begin with. It was doing that while I was going through the install process. It was starting to do that. Um, and it really starts to do that after you tell it the partition scheme. That's when it really starts dealing with those types of things. Because up until that point, it doesn't really have, uh, you could say, permission um, to access the hardware. It doesn't really know how you're going to want to set up. But now it's going to go through. Uh, and it's just going to install. It's going to, once it gets done, it's going to tell you to reboot. And then you are in Ubuntu Gnome. And so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And then we will do another video where I go through the first time logging into the system, what you're going to see, and talk about a couple of things that get you introduced to the command line. Or in Linux terms, the terminal. Now, the terminal has a very special place in my heart. I absolutely love it. And if I could live there forever, I would. But unfortunately, graphical user interfaces have just taken over everything. So until next time, you guys know what to do. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you next time.